Hello, my name is Jayesh. Welcome to the session that discusses the new Transfer Service Request Process Flow capability which is available from the 21A release of Oracle Utilities Customer Cloud Service. In this session, we will talk about this new feature and how it can impact your business. We will give you an overview of the new capability followed by more detail to explain how you would use it and the benefits to your business. Then we will walk you through a demonstration. Finally, we will explain what you need to consider when implementing this feature in your business and provide you with some additional resources. Transferring service is one of the key moments in the life cycle of a utility customer. This is where a customer is moving from one property to another. In this release, we have introduced the Transfer Service Request Process Flow capability. This helps call centre agents process transfer service requests efficiently in a consistent manner by guiding them through the common steps and actions for transferring service. A consistent process helps minimise errors as all the relevant information can be collected at the appropriate time from the customer that is required to successfully process a request. Now, there were two main drivers in providing this new capability these being usability and additional configurability. For usability, the call centre agent has an enhanced experience throughout their entire contact with the customer. This is right from when the customer first calls up and a call centre agent identifies and verifies the customer through to gathering the required information to process a request. To help collect all the required information from the customer in an efficient manner, we consolidate the information to be collected into logical panels or steps within a process flow. This information will then be eventually applied to the relevant customer related records such as person, account, service agreement and or premise records. Also, only the necessary information required to process a transfer service request is intended to be presented on the panels within a process flow. The second main driver was configurability. There are multiple configuration options and extension points provided with the new capability to support various business requirements. In addition to this, back-end processing associated with transferring service may also be extended by an implementation. As mentioned earlier, the new transfer service request process flow capability helps call centre agents process transfer service requests efficiently in a consistent manner by guiding them through the common steps and actions for transferring service. Here are some of the major highlights of the new capability. There is a visual representation at the top of the process flow screen so a call centre agent can easily see how far along they are in a process flow. At the end of a process flow, a final summary displays key information related to the request. A call centre agent can save an in-progress process flow. A saved process flow can then be resumed at a later stage to continue processing the request. One or more additional persons may be attached to the account linked to the transfer service request. For this, there is an inline person searching capability to allow a call centre agent to easily identify and then link additional persons to the account. If required, they can also unlink additional persons that are already linked to the account, for example, a flatmate who will no longer be associated with the main account holder. A call centre agent can also capture new and updated details for certain predefined attributes. Configurable insights can be surfaced on process flows. These can highlight important information to a call centre agent about the premise service and or account. As mentioned earlier, one of the main drivers for the capability was configurability. There are a larger number of business controls or configuration options and extension points to support various business requirements. Finally, there is also support for prerequisite processing to meet implementation specific requirements. The transfer service request process flow capability is very similar to the start service and stop service process flow capabilities which are also available from the 21A release of customer cloud service. Now, let's take a look at this feature so you can see how it can be used by your business. One of the ways to initiate a process flow 
for a transfer service request is via the transfer service option from the moving service dropdown in the premise tree dashboard zone. Now, the transfer service request process flow capability consists of a few key objects. A transfer service request process flow guides a call center agent step by step to capture all the required information from the customer to successfully process a transfer service request. This process flow is based on a specific process flow type. In addition to the process flow type, it also references a specific transfer service customer service request type. This customer service request type contains the various configuration options that control the behavior of the process flow. The customer service request type also defines the type of parent and child customer service requests to be created to assist in processing a transfer service request. This processing includes the creating and or updating of person, account, service agreement and or premise records. Let's now look at a process flow for a transfer service request based on the base product delivered transfer service related process flow type in a bit more detail. This is for a customer moving from one property to another. This process flow consists of four main steps or panels, these being move to premise address, services to start, services to stop and person and account details. The first main step or panel is move to premise address. This is used to search for the premise the customer is moving into. Now, at the top of most panels, there is a train user interface or UI element. This allows the call center agent to easily see how far along they are in the overall process flow. There is also a summary header on most panels. This provides high level information for the transfer service request, such as information for the person and account for the transfer service request and the moving to premise address when known. Now, on this panel is where the call center agent enters sufficient details to search for the premise record. After the search button is clicked, a list of possible matching records is displayed for them to select from. Once the correct premise record is selected, a variety of alerts or insights may be displayed to provide more information about the premise. These alerts or insights fall into three main categories. Premise-based alerts or insights, service-based alerts or insights, and account-based alerts or insights. An example of a premise-based alert or insight could be how many accounts have had service at this premise in the last 12 months. An example of a service-based alert or insight could be highlighting information about the service points at the premise, and an account-based alert or insight could highlight key information about the current account at the premise if it exists. These alerts or insights are configured by an implementation to meet their specific business requirements. This is via insight types and insight groups. Now, after clicking the next button, the call center agent is navigated to the second main step or panel of the process flow for the transfer service request. The second main step or panel is the services to start panel. As the name suggests, this is where the call center agent selects the services to start for the premise they are moving into. After the call center agent populates the start date, the panel displays the various services to start across three possible groupings, these being deposit, services and service agreements, and additional service agreements. In this example, a deposit is not configured to be required, so the deposit grouping section is not enabled. The Services and Service Agreement section displays the eligible services to start at the premise. This is based on the service points at the premise. The Base Product Delivered algorithm, if used, returns the service agreement type for each service point based on the existing or prior service at the premise. Now, if this is going to be the first service for a service point, the initial service agreement type defined on the service point service point type is returned. Now, some services may be checked or selected by default to be started, while others may not be. This is generally based on the current status of the services at the property. The call center agent then, if required, selects or unselects services to be started to override any default selections. Now, for each service to be started, if the SA type allows start options, the call center agent selects the appropriate start option to use for the service agreement to be created. 
By default, and if applicable, the start option for the previous service at the service point is returned. The call centre agent can override this default, if required. The Additional Service Agreement section is where the call centre agent can specify the additional service agreements to be created as part of processing the transfer service request. An example would be a service agreement for charitable contributions. Additional service agreements to start can be selected from those defaulted from the referenced customer service request type or be added manually. Near the end of this panel, if configured on the referenced customer service request type, the call centre agent is presented with several predefined premise attributes. Some premise related attributes may need to be updated as a result of transferring service. New and updated information captured on the process flow is later applied to the related premise record where service is to be started. When the next button is clicked, the call centre agent is navigated to the third main step or panel of the process flow for the transfer service request. This is the Services to Stop panel. This is primarily used to capture the details when and what services are to be stopped from the premise the customer is moving away from. After the call centre agent populates the stop date, the panel displays the various services for the account that are eligible to be stopped. Now some services may be checked or selected by default to be stopped, while others may not be. The call centre agent then, if required, selects or unselects services to be stopped to override any default selections. In addition to this, if configured on the reference customer service request type, the call centre agent is presented with several predefined attributes. Some premise based attributes may need to be updated as a result of transferring service. New and updated information captured on the process flow is later applied to the related premise record. A call centre agent may also be able to capture premise field notes to pass to field activities for stopping service. When the next button is clicked, the call centre agent is navigated to the fourth main step or panel of the process flow for the transfer service request. This is the Person and Account Details panel. This is where all other person and account related information is gathered. The various sections on this panel include Main Person, Other Persons on Account, Auto Pay, Other Account Details and Customer Contact. We will now look at each of these in a bit more detail. Let's look at Main Person first. Here the call centre agent can verify and or capture specific information for some predefined person related attributes. This may include life support and sensitive load notes, additional phone numbers and so on. They may also capture whether the customer wishes to receive their bills via email through the paperless billing option. An implementation configures which predefined attributes may appear here. New and updated information captured on the process flow is later applied to the related person and or account records. The second section on the person and account details panel is related to other persons on account. The call centre agent can also add other persons to the account for this transfer service request. When they click the Add Another Person button, a person search window opens up to allow them to search for the applicable person record. The person's name may be optionally combined with a phone number, email address and or primary identifier for the search. An implementation configures whether a phone number and or email address may be used as search options. An implementation also configures which types of primary identification may be used as search options. From the return list they can select the applicable person record to link to the account. Finally, if configured on the reference customer service request type, the call centre agent may be presented with information about other persons already linked to the account. If so, the call centre agent can verify and or capture specific information for some predefined person related attributes. An implementation configures which predefined attributes may appear here. New and updated information captured on the process flow is later applied to the related person and or account records. The call centre agent can also remove other persons already linked to the account if requested to by the customer. 
The third section on the Person and Account Details panel is related to Autopay. Here, the call centre agent captures whether the customer wishes to pay any future bills by automatic payment and then captures the required details. The fourth section on the Person and Account Details panel is related to Other Account Details. Here, the call centre agent can verify and or capture specific information for some additional predefined account attributes. An implementation configures which predefined attributes may appear here. New and updated information captured on the process flow is later applied to the related account record. The final section is the Customer Contact section. This section is enabled if an implementation specifies that a customer contact should be created for starting service at the Moving To premise. Here the call centre agent can capture a comment to add to the customer contact record. This customer contact may be used to trigger the creation of a letter to send to the customer. When the call centre agent clicks the finish button, they are transferred to the summary panel. The summary panel is the end of the process flow for a transfer service request. Now, just like start service request and stop service request, along with their respective process flows, parent and child customer service requests are also created for the transfer service request. Once the process flow is completed, the parent customer service request takes over. Several things then occur. A customer contact is created if configured to do so to additionally capture the interaction with the customer. It monitors to check all your configured implementation specific prerequisites or additional actions have been completed. Once these prerequisites or additional actions have been met or completed, a number of things occur. Person and account records are updated with new and updated information captured on the process flow. Pending service agreements are created for the premise the customer is moving into. Any existing service agreements that need to be stopped are initiated to be stopped. The parent customer service request then waits and monitors the various service agreements related to the premise. This includes monitoring newly created pending service agreements for the moving into premise for activation. Monitoring existing service agreements that need to be stopped have indeed been stopped. Once both of these have occurred, premise records will be updated with any new and updated information captured on the process flow. The transfer service request is then considered complete. The creating and or updating of person, account, service agreement and or premise records are all performed by specific child customer service requests which are managed by the parent customer service request. For further information about the transfer service request process, refer to the transfer service process and request section in the Customer to Meter Business User Guide. In this implementation advice section, we will quickly go through what you need to configure to enable the transfer service request process flow capability in your business. There are three main tasks that you should complete to enable the transfer service request process flow capability. First, you define the possible insights or information to be highlighted on applicable transfer service request process flow panels. Next, you must configure one or more customer service request types for transfer service request processing. These contain the business controls or configuration options and extension points to support various business requirements. Process flows and backend customer service requests use these for processing transfer service requests. Finally, you must configure an action method for transfer service request processing. When initiating a transfer service request, the solution initially creates a process flow and parent customer service request. The process flow type and customer service request type for these are derived from the action method. Now, for further information on these tasks, please see the Implementing Transfer Service Request Process Flows video for further information. For additional information about the new Transfer Service Request Process Flow capability, please see the Oracle Utilities Customer Cloud Service Library on Oracle Help Center which is available at docs.oracle.com. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.